Hundreds of representatives from 130 countries around the world have descended on Moscow. They're here for the second Congress of the International Russophile Movement and the Forum on Multipolarity, which kicked off this Monday. Right, let's cross now to Sayed Mohammed Marandi, political analyst and professor at Tehran University, joining me, joining me right here in the studio in Moscow. Professor, it's good to have you join me right now. Thank you for it's having me. It's good to me. really have you in the studio with me. You're very kind. Great. Now, let's talk about, let's, let me start with Russia. Um, what's your assessment regarding the, the standing of Russia when it comes to the world forum, especially as it relates to the multipolarity of the world? What's your assessment? I think the West is clearly on the decline. And Russia, among a number of other countries, have uh, been moving in the opposite direction. Russia is clearly on the rise. We've seen that after waves of sanctions against Russia, the country continues to grow. It continues to make advances on the battlefield in Ukraine. So uh, the future, as things progress, seem to favor the global south. And one of the key countries uh, in the Global South is, of course, Russia. The natural resources of uh, Russia are unrivaled, and uh, it has a large population. So, And also, Russia is making a lot of statements, and the noises that are coming out of Moscow uh, appeal to many across the world, many who are dissatisfied with the status quo. The, the, you talked about the world changing earlier. The, this paradigm shift is, is, the, is the West's are they aware of this paradigm shift? I think they're the last people to find out. There are some among elites in the West who are increasingly speaking about decline, and even some politicians, but they haven't changed their behavior. They, even those who acknowledge the decline of the West among the elites that are close to power or in power, they, they are not pushing to change policy. Uh, the West is not managing its decline well at all. And if they were smart, they would renegotiate their position with other countries. They would try to, uh, while acknowledging the changes, they would try to fit into this uh, changing world order in a way which benefits the West. But they're trying to hold on to power as if things were are still like they were 30, 40 years ago. And that's only going to And that's make during the, the Cold War. Exactly. And that's only going to make things worse for the West because they are not who they were decades ago. Let, let's look at the, the, the place of Russia. What, what does Russia need to do more officially, more intentionally to lead the world? Because the point is, if you look at the, the, the numbers right now, it looks like Russia is leading over 4 billion people around the world. If you're putting China, putting India, putting Africa and uh, the Middle East and lots of Asia together, that number far outweighs what the West controls. The West doesn't even have up to, up to a billion supporters around the world right now. If you look at the market, if you look at the numbers and so on. What does Russia, Russia need to do more intentionally to lead the global south into that new world? Well, I think Russia definitely will have to continue working for greater convergence with other major powers. Country China, of course, is the world's most powerful economy. It's, in my opinion, more important than the United States. Uh, Russia, of course, has resources that no other country has. On the other hand, you have uh, major regional powers. India is the most important country in the subcontinent. Iran, the most important country in West Asia, especially with its coalition of allies. And you have Brazil and countries in Africa and key resources in Africa. So through BRICS, for example, Russia can be uh, a leader alongside these other powers in managing this global change and isolating the West until the West chooses to change 
its policy. If the West were to behave as equals with other countries, there's no reason not to have excellent relations with Europe or the United States. But unfortunately, the West uh, is, as, as I said earlier, is unwilling to change, uh, whereas uh, it's, it's not, it doesn't have the power anymore to maintain control like it could in the past. Yeah, you mentioned BRICS earlier on. Is BRICS the formula now? Is, is that the game changer around the world? What do you think? It's, it's hard to say, but BRICS has huge potential, especially in the economic sphere, because uh, increasingly a larger number of countries want to have alternatives to Western financial institutions, and uh, they don't want Western control over trade and business. And so Iran and Russia, of course, more than any other country in BRICS, because both are heavily sanctioned. But China also wants this. India wants this for somewhat different reasons than China. But this is very key. So at the moment, I think it's the identity of BRICS is not yet completely clear. It's not clear where they want to go. But I think this is a key objective. And when Russia becomes the net, next head of BRICS, of BRICS in the coming months, I think they will probably be pushing harder in this particular direction with regards to economics. All right. Uh, how would you describe... Let's talk about Iran. Uh, how would you describe the role, the, the position of Iran in the Middle East, especially when we, we consider the ongoing tensions in the Middle East, the role that Iran even needs to perform right now. Recall that some countries in the West are calling for outright war with Iran. But, but speak to us about the position of Iran in the, in the middle of things here. I think Iran has been constantly on the rise for uh, the last couple of decades in particular. Ever since 9-11, I think uh, the Americans have been making major mistakes in our region and the Iranians have been able to capitalize on those mistakes and to punish the Americans and push them back. And also by creating alliances across the region, Iran now has uh, its friends uh, that are very powerful uh, across, the, uh, across the region in, uh, alongside the Mediterranean, whether it's the Palestinian resistance or uh, the resistance in Lebanon, in Yemen, they have a key ally, and of course, in Iraq and Syria. And therefore, Iran's uh, alliances and its capitalizing on the foolish mistakes and the crimes of the United States in this region, this has positioned, uh, created a, a shift in the balance of power. I think it by, the, I think by American uh, standards today, uh, they would recognize that they cannot win a war against Iran, a conventional war. Uh, Iran is simply too powerful. The Americans have declined. The Iranians today are much more powerful. And as I said, they have regional, a regional network of allies that makes it uh, virtually impossible for the Americans to win. And the Iranians have done this by winning hearts and minds. The Americans impose regimes. They carry out coups. They keep unpopular dictators in power across the world, that, uh, that, it, that allows them to carry out certain policies, but it doesn't give them the power that uh, a country like Iran has when its allies across the region see the Iranians treating them as equals and uh, treating them as friends rather than proxies. The Americans in the West like to call them proxies, but that's where they think they get things wrong. Mm. Now, it's two years after the war, uh, the, the, the issues, the conflict between uh, Russia and Ukraine. And this conflict has lasted due to this conflict. Russia has become the most sanctioned country in the world. But in this space, Russia has continued to rise. How would you assess the impact of the sanctions on Russia? There are, there are a number of reasons, I think. One is that Russia is enormous. It has huge resources. The second is that the West miscalculated. They still live in the past. They think that they have the sort of power that they had three, four decades ago and that Russia is the Russia of 
three, four decades ago. If you recall, Obama, I think it was he that said Russia is a, uh, is a, is a gas station uh, of sorts, whereas Russia is a, has a huge and diverse economy. But also, in addition to that, I think uh, the West has overused their uh, tools of uh, imposing sanctions. They've imposed it on a host of different countries. And uh, by, um, by adding more and more countries, they make other countries like China uh, more careful about and cautious about the West. And then countries begin to learn uh, how to both circumvent the sanctions, but other countries also begin to think seriously about alternatives to Western financial systems, uh, the Western financial system, thus BRICS. So, and of, and of course, Iran helped Russia too, because Iran has been sanctioned from, heavily sanctioned for many years, and Iran passed on its experiences to Russia. So what Iran had to learn over a decade, the Russians were able to learn within a few months, thanks to uh, the Iranian experience. So much to learn and so much to do out there as we look forward to how the coming weeks and months will play as paradigms continue to shift on a daily basis, whether everyone knows or they don't, what the paradigm is shifting. We have to leave you here now. Uh, Professor Sayed Mohammed uh, Marandi, thank you so much for your time with me. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you. Great.